I confess Bowing here I find my rest And without you I fall apart You're the one that guides my heart Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you Where sin runs deep Your grace is more Your grace is found Is where you are and where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. temptations come my way and when I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay and when I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you oh I Please be seated. Thank you for being with us for our worship here at Oasis, the contemporary service of Zion Lutheran Church on Saturday afternoons here in our fellowship hall in Fort Myers, Florida. And a welcome to those of you who are watching online, either in real time or as this service is archived for later viewing. If you're viewing online and you would like to have a little more information about what's going on here at Zion, and especially at Oasis, every week uh, we have an e-blast that our youth and family minister, Tim Richter, puts out. And you can be on the mailing list to get that via email. Simply send your request to info at zionfm.org. There's a sign-in folder on the end of the row of chairs. So if you would please, sometime during the service, not during the sermon, please, uh, <laughs> put your information down there as is noted. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, in that uh, folder, there also are um, blue sheets for prayer requests or thanksgivings. So if you'd like us to have in our prayers a request or a thanksgiving that you want us to gather to lift up before the Lord, please fill that out and then put that in the offering plate when it comes around later on in the service. If you're online watching us and you'd like us at some point to add a prayer that you might request, 
you can do that by emailing me at pastorhank at zionfm.org, and uh, we'll add that prayer then the next time we worship here at Oasis. Today we're going to continue our sermon series about my story. We're looking at how decisions we make influence the story which our lives will tell about our faith in Jesus. And our theme today is, I decided to stay. We'll hear about some people who stayed in our scripture readings, but first we pray. God, our Father, you have blessed us with stories of your people who provide models for our living as followers of Jesus. Send your Spirit to guide our decisions so that our lives tell stories which witness to the Savior's love for all people. We pray in his name. Amen. Sometimes we believe that God's will for us is to stay in a difficult situation. When we do that, the story told by our lives can point others to how God is at work. That's what happened with the story of a heathen woman named Ruth. Her story even was included in the Old Testament. Listen to how it began. Selected verses from the first chapter of the book of Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife was Naomi. Their two sons were Malon and Kilion. Then Elimelech died, and Naomi was left with her two sons. The two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman named Orpah, and the other a woman named Ruth. But about ten years later, both Malon and Kilion died. This left Naomi alone. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Naomi and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back to your mother's homes. May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they all broke down and wept. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Look, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by her daughter-in-law Ruth, the young Moabite woman. Jesus can ask us to stay even though that will mean dealing with difficulty because he stayed with his mission to suffer and die for us. He talked about this when the local puppet king here at Antipas was seeking Jesus' death. Luke 13, 31 through 35. At that time, some Pharisees said to Jesus, get away from here if you want to live. Herod Antipas wants to kill you. Jesus replied, go tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and the third day I will accomplish my purpose. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must proceed on my way, for it wouldn't do for a prophet of God to be killed except in Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers, how often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now, look, your house is abandoned, and you will never see me again until you say, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Do you love to tell a story? Many people do. But even if we never say a word, all of us tell stories. Our lives form a narrative, a story for those who watch us. We've begun a series of messages here at Oasis which reflect that the decisions we make today 
will determine the story others see tomorrow. We're calling this My Story for short. That's because calling it How My Story Will Show How I Try to Follow Jesus is a little long for a theme. Last Saturday, we heard how sometimes our story could be titled, I Decided to Start. Today, our message focuses on times when we say, I decided to stay. We're talking about situations in life where it would be easier to leave, but instead, we stay. I benefited from someone who decided to stay when I flew into Columbia, South Carolina to attend a conference. Weather delayed the flight. I was worried because we would land after the rental car counter closed at midnight. I had visions of sleeping on the floor of the airport instead of in the bed in the motel room. So you can imagine my relief when I got to the rental car counter at 12.45 a.m. and the rep had stayed on the job. He could have left on time and gone home, but he stayed. It would have been easier to walk away but he didn't. That leads to the question, what causes a person to stay? There are several answers to that question. One answer is inertia. Some persons stay in a situation because Newton's first law of motion sometimes applies to emotions too. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. You may know people who stayed in a job which they really didn't like because they didn't want to bother to look for another job. Perhaps you fall asleep watching TV simply because of inertia. It's easier to stay there. We're not talking about that kind of staying. Another thing is that people are afraid of what will happen if they leave. You may be aware of someone in a marriage who prefers the problems they know to the problems they would face being on their own. We're not talking about that kind of staying either. We're also not talking about staying when we would be hurt spiritually or physically. Staying in an abusive situation would not be God's will for us. We're talking about people staying when they believe it's God's will that they stay. They stay even though they know that there probably will be hard work ahead. Staying was on the minds of some members of my congregation in Maryland when I arrived, two months before my 60th birthday. I was asked, how long will you stay? Members of the congregation had reason for concern. They had paid to move another pastor from the Midwest to the Atlantic coast three years earlier. He stayed three years before he retired. Those members were relieved when I said I planned to stay at least 10 years, God willing. I stayed close to 13 years. Looking back, I believe it was God's will that I stayed longer than I had planned. Today we're going to look at Ruth, a hero of the Old Testament who stayed despite many challenges. Her story is a prime example of how God can use people who stay to do his will. As we look at Ruth, we can look at what's helpful when we face a decision about staying. The book of Ruth begins by telling how a family of Israelites from Bethlehem, Naomi, her husband, and their two sons, reacted to famine in their area. They moved to Moab, a neighboring country where there was food. There was only one problem. The true God was not worshipped in Moab. The Moabites worshipped Chemosh. Unlike the true God of the Israelites, Chemosh was cruel. In fact, we know that Chemosh's worshipers sacrificed children to him sometimes. Perhaps this is why, when Naomi's sons married Moabite women, one of these women, Ruth, became a worshiper of the true God. But these happy days ended. During the next 10 years, all the men in the family died. With Judah now growing plenty of food, Naomi headed back to her original home. She encouraged her daughter-in-law, Ruth, now also a widow, to return to Moab. But Ruth insisted on staying with Naomi. Ruth said, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. While Ruth's words sometimes are heard at weddings, they first were spoken here by a daughter-in-law 
to her mother-in-law. Ruth didn't just decide to stay with Naomi because life would be easier. Just the opposite. Ruth was a foreigner in Bethlehem. She would be a stranger in a strange land. Both Naomi and Ruth were widows. They had no one to financially support them. Widows in those days were ignored or taken advantage of or almost always poor. Yet Ruth stayed because she had faith in God, a treasured relationship with Naomi, and was willing to work hard. Let's explore those three reasons to see if they can help you and me when we are trying to decide whether to stay. When we think God's will is that we should stay in a situation, that means we trust God to work good out of challenging circumstances. Mary and I were forced to trust God when our daughter Angie needed emergency surgery while studying in England. Mary was speaking California. I was in the middle of Lent in Illinois with six services a week. Neither of us could go to England, but God provided. Angie was in a country where English is spoken. Well, at least that's what they call it. God provided a good surgeon three days of, for three days of hospital care. When Angie returned to the dorm, a nurse from the British National Health Service came every day for two weeks to change her dressing. Then the college's dean of students took over because she also was a nurse. She cared for Angie daily until we could arrange for Angie to fly home. Through all of this, the God in whom we trusted had put people in place to help. The Bible contains these words of the Lord. Before they call, I will answer. We can trust in God to help, even though sometimes his actions may seem delayed in our time frame. When Ruth stayed and trusted, God helped. Ruth's poverty led her to glean, picking up loose grain during harvest time on the fields of Boaz, a rich farmer. He made sure that Ruth was able to get plenty of grain. She brought home more than enough food for her and Naomi. Eventually, Boaz married Ruth. Ruth teaches us that the first reason for deciding to stay is that we trust God's will for our lives. Our faith in God begins with the fact that his son Jesus stayed on earth, even though he knew this meant suffering and dying to win our forgiveness. Our reading from St. Luke's Gospel recorded Jesus' determination to stay. Why? Because Jesus was willing to die for our sins. Those include the times when we leave instead of staying to serve the Lord in a tough situation. Someone has said that it really wasn't the nails that kept Jesus on the cross. He was held there by his love for the world, including you and me. Once in a while, other people remind us that staying can come with a price. That's what happened to Professor Dr. Liviu Libres University when a gunman murdered 32 people. The gunman chained classroom doors shut so intended victims could not get out. Dr. Librescu was a Romanian Jew who had survived the Nazi Holocaust. He told students to open the windows and escape. His son later talked about emails from students who said the professor had saved their lives by staying and literally placing himself in the line of fire. His decision to stay cost him his life. We probably won't be asked to pay with our lives when we decide to stay in difficult circumstances. But we can stay because we feel that God wants us to do that. We can stay because we trust in a Savior who did pay with his life so that we are saved. Besides trusting in God, a second reason to stay when we think doing so is God's will is this. We value relationships. A friend of mine moved from St. Louis to an Illinois suburb when she married. She became active in a Lutheran church. Years later, when her husband died, her mother and daughter wondered if she would move back across the Mississippi River to live closer to them. No, she said. My church home is here. I'm staying. She stayed because of her relationships with other church members. In our Bible story, Ruth's relationship with her mother-in-law was, humanly speaking, 
the reason that she stayed with Naomi. Naomi made it clear to Ruth that she couldn't offer her daughter-in-law any more sons to marry. She knew that Ruth might be treated unkindly. Ruth had come from a heathen nation to live among believers in the true God. Yet Ruth stayed. That's how much she valued her relationship with Naomi, the woman who taught her about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How important are relationships in your life? Someone recently said that many American Christians emphasize personal salvation and an individual relationship with God above everything else. Now, there's no question about it. It's most important to believe in Jesus as our personal Savior. But the Bible goes much farther than that when it comes to our relationships. New Testament writers talk again and again about the importance of the fact that each one of us is a member of the Christian church. The church is everyone who believes in Jesus. Our life following him starts with his reaching down to save us. Then as the Holy Spirit plants faith in our hearts, we reach back up with faith. But the Christian faith moves in three directions, not two. We also move sideways, loving our sisters and brothers in Christ on either side of us. The more we share faith and life with other believers, the easier it is to stay in difficult situations. Developing community, relationships with other Christians, can help us in so many ways. We can decide to stay because we trust God to work good, and because of relationships, which the Lord provides with others who believe in him. A third component in deciding to stay, which we learned from Ruth, is that we are willing to work hard. That's what is usually needed if we stay. This was a case for Robertson McCulkin, president of a South Carolina Christian college, when his 58-year-old wife, Muriel, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. She lost her basic skills to speak, think, dress, feed, and care for herself. Her husband resigned as president to care for Muriel full time. He did that for 13 years until she died. Many people told him they were surprised that he stayed and honored his marriage vows to serve in that way. He explained that he relied on God to meet his wife's needs week after week, month after month. He said that she was precious to him, and he found satisfaction in his serving. In our story, Ruth was willing to work hard, too. Suppose she had said, gleaning is for poor people. I shouldn't have to stoop to do that. But she didn't. Ruth worked as hard as she could and depended on God. She had no idea that the owner of the field where she gleaned would become her husband. They would become ancestors of King David, and eventually, ancestors of Jesus. How hard are you or I willing to work when we find ourselves in a tough situation? If we believe that we are following God's will, and he will use what we do, we do our best, even when that's hard. St. Paul says, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. That includes when we have decided to stay and face a challenge. Like that college president, others will see our story by the actions we take and the words we say. When we decide that it's God's will that we stay, we can trust in God to work good. Rejoice in valued relationships and be willing to work hard. Then, because our lives will tell a story worth sharing. Amen. During the next song, we will pass the collection plate to gather offerings and prayer requests. If you haven't used the sign-in folder yet, uh, please do so at this time. Our song of response includes these words, Here I raise my Ebenezer. 
That's an Old Testament reference. The Hebrew word Ebenezer literally means stone of help. The Old Testament prophet Samuel gave this name to a stone he put up to be a constant reminder to the Israelites that God had protected them and led them to victory in a battle. We sing, Come Thou Fount. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy ever ceasing sing songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming talk above praise the mount i'm fixed upon it mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise my Ebenezer, here by great help I've come, and I pray by thy good measure, safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood oh to grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be let thy grace lord like a fetter find my wandering heart to thee i'm prone to wander lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love here's my heart lord take and seal it seal it for thy courts above that day when freed from sinning i shall see thy lovely face clothed then in blood washed linen how i'll sing thy sovereign grace come by lord no longer tarry take my ransom soul away send thine angels now to tarry me to realms of endless day send my angels now to tarry me to realms of endless day our statement of faith is the apostles creed it's projected for us on the screens please rise We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. While the offering plate has been passed here among our in-person worshipers, we don't want to leave out you who are with us on the internet. And we know you can't physically place an offering into the plate that we use here, but you can give online through electronic fund 
transfer or by mailing your offerings to the Zion Church office. Our offerings are part of a, an act of worship, just like our singing and our praying and our listening to the word. And so we want to dedicate the gifts that we have here and those which will be given with prayer. Giver of every good and perfect gift, bless these gifts which we have received through your overflowing goodness. We return them now to you. Use these offerings to build your church so all may come to know Jesus Christ, your Son, as Savior and Lord. Amen. We're at our time for prayer. Are, were there any prayer requests from the in-person worshipers? No, there weren't, but there is one addition. And that is that we include in our prayers Solomon, the 10-year-old grandson of Mary and myself in Indianapolis. Uh, Solomon has a serious eye disease, but he just yesterday was diagnosed with COVID-19. So we include him in the prayers. God, our Father, you continue to invite us to receive your love. With confidence, we come to you in prayer that we may receive grace to help us and others in times of need. Lord of life, bring health and healing to your people. We pray for everyone who desires your mercy, including those with medical and other needs, such as Solomon. And specifically, we pray for those individuals known to us whom we now name silently in our hearts. Lord Jesus, as the pandemic has intensified the pandemic here and elsewhere, be with doctors, nurses, and respiratory workers who serve in our hospitals. Strengthen them as they contend with personal exhaustion, plus physical and mental fatigue in their long hours of trying to save lives. Gracious Jesus, we pray for all who go in harm's way to serve our country and the common good, especially first responders and our military. Hold them in the palm of your hands. We also remember those who face chronic pain or discomfort in body, mind, or spirit, as well as those who care for them. And we lift up everyone who struggles with addictions. Point them to the promise of your grace through your word. On this weekend, Holy Spirit, we pray for guests in our congregation's worship, that they may see how Jesus provides help for us when we are tempted to give in and leave instead of staying as part of our following him. We ask, gracious Father, that you remember the members and friends of Zion not with us in worship this afternoon or tomorrow morning, especially all who travel. Send your angels to guide and guard them in all their ways. You are the Lord of the nations. Bless our president, our governor, and all other political leaders around the world. Guide the political process in this country. Lead each of us to be responsible citizens, even while we respect others whose opinions disagree with our own. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would guide our sisters and brothers in the faith at Fort Myers Korean Baptist Church, as well as our sister congregation in the Florida, Georgia District, Grace Lutheran Church in Arcadia. We pray, too, for Zion Lutheran Church. Guide us to increase our faith in Jesus, to reach out with his good news, to serve our neighbor in this community and beyond because we follow Jesus, and to care for and encourage one another as sisters and brothers in Christ. Thank you for all of your blessings. Help us also to be grateful for the little things in life we may take for granted, headlights that go on automatically when we drive and it gets dark the gentle whispering of a palm tree in the wind, and water which is safe to drink when we turn on the faucet. Finally, Heavenly Father, with thanksgiving for your care, we turn all our other needs over to you using the words your Son has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
forever and ever. Amen. We stand for our closing song. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. forsaken for by my side the Savior he will stay I labor on in weakness and rejoicing for in my need his power is displayed to this I hold my shepherd will defend me through the deep valley he will lead. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus fled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever has my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing. I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to him. When the race is complete, till my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Not I, but through Christ in me. Please be seated. Thank you for being here today for in-person worship here at Oasis. And thanks also to those of you who are watching and worshiping with us online. And a special thanks to Heidi Yankovich, who was our music leader for the service today. We appreciate your being here. 
If you know someone you feel would benefit spiritually by being part of our Oasis community, either in person or online, please tell them about these services. Recordings of Oasis are archived on the Oasis Fort Myers YouTube channel of Zion. And this can be accessed through the Oasis page on the Zion website. Next Saturday, we continue our sermon series on my story. We'll focus on how we can say, I decided to stop even at times when that decision is hard to carry out. Our blessing starts with words of the Apostle Paul from the first chapter of his letter to the Christians in the city of Ephesus. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better. And I pray that also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you may know the hope to which he has called you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.